Hello, I am Dion Duplessis. I am the English researcher at SADELAR, the South African Centre for Digital Language Resources, and this is my colleague. Hello everyone, I'm Benito Trollope. I'm the Afrikaans researcher at SADELAR. Afrikaans has a history of seeking normative purity, especially in the face of its long and continued contact with English, which sees English origin features incorporated into the language. When Afrikaans became standardized and institutionalized, the apartheid government pushed it as a symbol of Afrikaner identity and the various ideologies they embraced. This led to the marginalization of persons who were not regarded as part of the in-group by the apartheid establishment, which ultimately contributed toward the widespread rejection of standard Afrikaans norms in favor of non-standard speech practices particularly those which can be described as mixed codes, primarily as a marker of community identity. And Dion, did you know that it was illegal for the LGBT community to practice their lifestyle during apartheid? Exactly. There has been a slow but steady increase in consideration of how gendered language is used in Afrikaans, especially in instances where the language does not yet have the vocabulary to express or discuss certain sexual or gender identities, and speakers often resort to terms from English. Yes, and uh, in a blog we wrote last year, Dion, we wanted to write about bisexual erasure and comfort, and in Afrikaans there aren't words to refer to those concepts. Academic inquiry, not only in the Afrikaans English contact situation, has focused on individuals' use of specific linguistic features to communicate about gendered language. Here, we propose that in the absence of normatively Afrikaans terminology or consensus on the interpretation of gendered terms, mixed codes are in constructed at an inter-individual level to express gender and sexuality authentically. Much of the existing literature on the Afrikaans English contact situation focuses on geographic concerns, such as District 6, an area in Cape Town. And similar observations have ma been made for El Barrio in New York City. The phenomenon is therefore not so restricted to the South African context. So the practice of developing a bilingual medium in the English Afrikaans community is very well attested. This serves to stabilize new or alternative norms in everyday communication in short, it functions as a symbol of separate identity. Such developments have been considered, however briefly, in the speech of gay men, so-called gay tal or gay language. And Dion, the lack of Afrikaans terminology actually moves and necessitates some organizations and individuals to develop more Afrikaans words. And the Commission for Gender Equality which is a constitutional commission, worked in collaboration with the Pan-South African Language Board to develop a terminology list for Afrikaans gender words. Unfortunately, that lack of terminology remains the case at present. It is not a given that community-wide acceptance of these new norms would actually take place. Anna Doimitz specifically critiques the idea that members would necessarily attach the same or at least similar meanings to linguistic forms in the context of the Afrikaans English language contact situation, but also in language contact situations more generally, the so-called fixed code fallacy. When looking at the Afrikaans gender terminology usage, we identify three different types of sources. When looking at the Klein on your screen at the moment, on the left-hand side is the more informal sources developed by community members, web blogs, and then in the middle we have a more formal list of words that a group of activists published. On the right-hand side is the more formal word list developed by PantsHelp and the CGE, and it was done with consultation of qualified linguists in the field of terminology development. Ultimately, we consolidated 117 Afrikaans gender terms into one table extracted from these different types of sources. 
Some of them are derived forms of each other and others are compound forms. The extended table has a column for the Afrikaans word, the English translation, which sources they appeared in, as well as the column with the amount of occurrences in the Virtual Institute for Afrikaans online corpus. A lot of discussion about these terms is possible, but we will have to limit ourselves for the purpose of time. With a cursory look at the entire table, an obvious observation is that only four of the terms appear in all three kinds of sources, 13 terms in only two, but the majority of 98 terms only appear in one source. What I also found especially striking is the inclusion of intersex, which is equivalent to the English intersex. On the one hand, it can be an, an independent word, on the other, it's part of a compound. Yes, Dion, and the four words that appear in all the sources are asexual, bisexual, queer and transgender. Interestingly, gay is not in all the sources, seeing as the CGE word list opted to use gay pursuan as the alternative. From the full list, there are a lot of general Afrikaans words that also inflate and maybe confuse the data a bit. One example to illustrate this is the word sexluis, which is the Afrikaans equivalent for asexual or being sexless. The hits from the data indicate that sexluis is used in context primarily referring to only situations where sex is withheld from someone. So it's not used in context where there's reference to being asexual or having no sexual orientation. This already illustrates the difference between word lists and the usage of those words by people speaking the language. The table being used today is an excerpt from the 117 item table. On your screen, the table includes 10 Afrikaans words from the whole list. These terms are in order of the most to least common in the Viva Comprehensive Corpus of around 248 million Afrikaans words gay, morphi, bisexual, homophobie, intersex, gender identiteit, fopdosser, asexual, cisgender, and intersex as a compound component. It is apparent from the table that gay dominates usage when considering it being used more than 5,000 times versus its closest contender Morphe only registering 544 hits. Necessarily, the contexts in which gay is used are a lot more than in the case of Morphe. The contexts give us a clue of the meaning attached to the word by the language users. It differs, for example, when asked what the isolated dictionary meaning is versus how it is used. The third most common word is bisexual, with 241 hits in the data. From one contextual sentence, it seems that users employ the same meaning of the word that what is meant in the word lists. Two of the hits show bisexual being used as nouns in Afrikaans. Next in the table is womophobie, one of the four phobias listed in the comprehensive word list. With 185 hits, the meaning corresponding to the defined meaning when the contexts are considered. As a side note, it should be mentioned that normally phobias are irrational fears rather than institutionalized discrimination against groups of people. For words like that, we normally use ism, like in racism or classism, but that just as a side note. Next is gender identiteit, that has 70 hits in the data, most of them used in contexts where gender identities are being explained, similar to cisgender, that has 13 hits lower off in this table. The remaining terms are fopdosser and asexual. Fopdosser 
is used as a term that refers to cross dressers, drag kings or drag queens, and from the data it seems to be used mostly when referring to drag queens. Interestingly, our sexual is used in the data when referring to animals that revert to an asexual state when reproducing. When we lastly considered the use of intersex as an independent word versus as a component of a more complex word, it is interesting, as language users tend to still use it as an independent word. There's more than a hundred hit difference seeing that the use of a word as a component is more complex, language users don't have the meaning entrenched yet, so it's unnatural for them to use intersex as a component of a more complex word. Ultimately, speakers avail themselves of the entire pool of linguistic features, which in the case of highly bilingual mother tongue speakers of Afrikaans, will be those both from Afrikaans and English. They use this to facilitate communication where their gender or sexual identity is affirmed most effectively, or put differently, where the words for self-expression are not available in one language, then they are taken from another. As Liketi Makalela might put it, this demonstrates a move away from what language looks like toward what people do with language. Here, to give linguistic expression to identities whose descriptors may still be unavailable or in flux. Additionally, this may signal a rejection of standard norms which may be seen to align more closely to an anti-queer agenda in favour of a more inclusive register. It is, after all, a truism of language contact research that the sociolinguistic history of the speakers and not the structure of their language is the primary determinant of the linguistic outcome of language contact. We cannot overlook inter-individual agency in the context of everyday life, regardless of the availability or lack of more formalized language resources. This is of course an exploratory study with a strong emphasis on normative aspects and resources, and it would benefit greatly from additional ethnographic investigation. Yeah, Dion, I also think that future work should definitely include engaging community members on these terms, finding out how do they conceptualize these words, and also looking at words that can have a pejorative meaning in Afrikaans, which uh, includes morphe that we uh, included in the discussion, but also morph, trasi, sissy, and skiff are words that should be explored more within the Afrikaans LGBT community. Precisely, something that I have found very lacking in the sources thus far is that they do not engage with the community directly, but rather rely on the experts of individuals, whether they be experts or interested lay people. Yeah, I think, like we saw from the data, that it's difficult to connect the meaning in formal sources with the meaning that people employ when speaking or writing specifically about these topics. Clearly this is a topic on which a lot more engagement is required, but we thank you for joining us today.